consumer behavior is interdisciplinary. The study of consumer behavior enables us to analyze how people make consumption decisions. It helps us understand why and how they buy, the things they buy, the views they hold, and basically all kind of information related to their behavior and which we need in order to support winning marketing strategies. So consumer behavior is key to developing winning marketing strategies. Now understanding consumer behavior helps us to understand the internal and external influences that impel individuals to take certain consumption related decisions. Now those who understand consumer behavior have a great advantage, great competitive advantage indeed in the marketplace. Human behavior is complex and it's influenced by very many factors from psychological factors to sociological factors. Now to be able to analyze behavior of consumers in matters related to consumption choices at a deep level, you need a good understanding of the individual, of the human being as an individual, and also the human being in their social setting, how they live with others and the like. For this reason, the field of consumer behavior borrows heavily from various disciplines, including disciplines like sociology, psychology, economics, and others. And that's why we talk about it as interdisciplinary. It owns that interdisciplinary tag because of the combination of so many disciplines in order to get to the point uh, that you are learning about how to understand consumers. Hi there, I'm Catherine Gaho from SBO Research and thank you for tuning into my channel, Elevators, where we offer elevating and empowering messages to help you grow in life, career and business. In this video, I will talk about interdisciplinary nature of consumer behavior and the contribution of the different disciplines to this subject of consumer behavior. I will also give you some examples. So do like this video and stay with me. I tell you to like at this point because you will like it and then you will forget to, to click like. So just touch the like button and tell others about it. Consumer behavior relates to the conduct that consumers exhibit in searching for, purchasing and using products and services which they of course expect will satisfy their needs and wants. Now people are willing to spend money to satisfy their needs, wants and desires. Regardless of what you offer to the marketplace, the main factor in your success in the marketplace will be in a way tied to your ability to add value to the consumer's life or basically to meet their expectations or to exceed their expectations because sometimes the consumer doesn't even know what exactly they want but when they see it they know they want it and that is when we say you actually anticipated their needs fairly well. Now in these days of um, constant change consumer buying behavior is always changing in response to the emerging dynamics the many things that keep changing in the market think about all the changes that have happened in the recent times now consumer behavior focuses on understanding how individuals make decisions to spend their available resources these resources can be seen in terms of money many times in consumption we think it's just about money but a lot of times we spend a lot of time to be able to consume something we pay the money and then give the time, maybe it's in entertainment, in services. We spend a lot of time even queuing for services that we are buying and even consuming the services. And also we spend a lot of energy on consumption related items. So in consumer behavior, we are always interested in the what, why, how, when, who, and where and so on. It was William Benbach, we are told he was an advertising person of the olden days in the 1950s or something like that. And he said this statement that is so powerful that is still relevant today. That nothing is so powerful as an insight into human nature. What compulsions drive a man? What instincts dominate his action? If you can know these things about a man, and I guess a woman, you can touch that person at the core of his being. William Benbach. 
that is what consumer behavior seeks to do to understand to know the person to understand them very well so that they can touch him at the core of his being that they can touch her at the core of her being now to understand all that the discipline of consumer behavior has to borrow from many other important disciplines first is psychology actually a major part of consumer behavior comes from psychology where we study the psychology of the consumer as an individual through this we are able to learn about consumer motivation perception personality how they learn because you need to know how do consumers learn and you can only get the theories behind that from psychology and their attitudes the attitudes they hold all that borrows heavily from psychology the second discipline that consumer behavior borrows from is sociology sociology is the study of groups and in consumer behavior we talk about how consumers make decisions in their social setting to learn about this we have to use the discipline of sociology and this brings in the group dynamics because you have to understand group dynamics reference groups celebrities family and family life cycle we look at celebrities actually particularly because we want to understand their influence as a frame of reference for other people's decisions the question of family is so important i've been talking about family consumption roles family life cycle these are very important topics which you only get from psychology we cannot be able to talk about this subject without psychology the other one is husband and wife dynamics how couples live how they share roles their gender role orientation and how it influences the decisions they make and also we look at culture and subculture and the like and all that comes from sociology now the third discipline which we borrow from in consumer behavior it looks like we are always borrowing or like all what we have is borrowed we borrow from social psychology how an individual operates in a group this adds value in helping understand how consumers operate when in their social setting it helps understand better about group dynamics reference groups and the like like partly what we were learning from psychology but in a deeper sense where the individual is seen as operating within a context of surrounded by others the fourth thing is cultural anthropology consumer behavior borrows from cultural anthropology which is the study of human beings in a society but this is a different kind of study from now sociology it looks at culture and how people operate in various groups and then the fifth is economics consumer behavior borrows heavily from economics that is the study of how consumers make decisions to maximize their satisfaction you know how economics always tells us that uh, consumers or people have scarce resources and they have unlimited needs and uh, therefore it helps us understand how do consumers apply their scarce resources their limited money to make decisions related to consumption and it's very interesting because the whole world we spend so much time basically consuming that uh, you cannot ignore this question and of course the idea of scarce resources is such a truth about society that people have scarce resources and they also want too many things so that allocation process is explained by economics and that is what we use economics for in consumer behavior we want to learn these things of how consumers get to apply their limited resources to their unlimited needs now the sixth is research we borrow from research research is a separate discipline an independent discipline but consumer behavior borrows heavily from research because it helps us to understand the consumer and to gain insights that are needed on all aspects about consumer behavior actually all the things that we are talking about you require research to learn more about what are the consumer needs what do the consumers want what motivates them what drives them how do they perceive the product you are offering what is their attitude towards these products what do they believe what are their beliefs how do they believe how can you get them to believe what you are telling them what are their belief systems how do they learn how can you teach them how to use a product and that is so important because if you don't know how consumers learn how do you then 
for example, create a product and then do instructions for use that consumers can follow. So you must learn about your target segment, the consumer that you are targeting. You must be able to know how they learn and all these other things we are talking about for you to be able to give them value, to, for you to be able also to understand them, to be competitive because you are able to give them what they want because you understand them. When you give them instructions, they are able to follow. They don't go having accidents with your product. They don't go getting problems with your product or getting dissatisfied because they could not learn how to use it. And when I talk about this, it reminds me of the early days. You know, we always think that many of the products that we use today, there are some we take for granted, like powder detergent. You know, many times we think that we are learning how to use a phone. Today, of course, those are the things we are learning. But in the old days, when powder detergent was first introduced to the world, People had no idea. In this country, in Kenya, people used to wash their clothes by the riverside. Now, if you're washing clothes by the riverside, how do you use a powder detergent? So the first thing, the first company to come to Kenya and introduce powder detergent had to buy basins and give free basins to people, to families. They went to families, the homes of teachers and uh, administrative officers during colonial days. It's that long ago and they gave them free basins and taught them how to put powder detergent mixed with water and how to wash clothes in that context. And with time, those introduced the next group and the next group and the next group. That requires a lot of anthropology, sociology, psychology, and all that for you to be able to deliver that kind of understanding. That's what I mean. That consumer behavior is totally interdisciplinary and depends on borrowing from very many disciplines. Those six that I've talked about are the most common. To sum up, some of the disciplines that contribute to the makeup of the discipline of consumer behavior are psychology as a study of individuals, sociology as a study of groups, social psychology as a study of how an individual operates in a social setting, and fourth, Cultural anthropology, which is a study of human beings in a society. Fifth is economics, the study of how consumers make decisions to maximize their satisfaction. Then the sixth is research. Thank you for staying with me. Do like this video and share it with others who you think will need it. And do subscribe to my channel and bring more people to benefit from what you are currently consuming. Thank you very much and best wishes, we all need to elevate our mindsets at this time.